All right, everybody, we are live again. Dynasty Mirror Search for Uhuru. And I have the sister, uh, Afro you Afro European sister, uh Felici. Felici. I know I'm butchering your name. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Felici. Hello? Felici. Felici. Sagbo with us and uh Sag Sagbo. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And today's topic, you know, is the culture shock Afro-Europeans experience in America. But I think we're going to go into a different direction. Did you just call me? What? You said you're Afro-European, right? Oh, keep going. Okay. But I think we're going to go into a, a, a different direction. Now, go, go ahead and introduce yourself, uh, Felici. And, you know, okay. say hello. Oh, my name where are you from? Felici. Your story and all that. So my name is Felici. Um, I was born in France. Um, I moved to the U.S. when I was six years old, and I um, been living here ever since. Um, I okay. Stop the show. Stop the show. If you moved here when you were six, why are you still claiming to be Afro-European? What? Because I'm a French citizen. Like I can't consider myself like African American, so that's why. I what you've been here since you were six yeah but this is the thing like i just feel such a different experience like i've always been kind of like um what's that thing left out like when i was around other black kids like it was just like you're too white and then like i grew up having a lot more other friends people that weren't black um and then when i would be around like family friends and stuff like that it was just like well you're the french one so it was just like where do i fit you know it's like my puzzle piece is too jagged you know what i mean uh, okay um now see now this is the thing i know plenty of african americans born and raised here that sometimes don't feel like they fit in into the yeah. black experience here in america so i yeah. don't I don't understand. What does that have to do with you claiming to be Afro-European? Well, like I said, it's I only have to identify like that in America because, like I said, I'm a French citizen. You know, mm -hmm. like, you know, everywhere I go, is like, I got to have my green card. I got to have my French passport. Like, you know, I'm a French citizen. It's a part of my life. Like, you know, every Mardi Gras, we have crepes, like we eat croissants, like we have Pinot Grigio and Pinot Noir and all that stuff. Like we speak French at home, like that is a part of me. Like, but it's not that, oh, I prefer France over Togo or Africa, but it's just like a lot of my family lives in France. Like when I go to France, that's home for me, you know? Like, I just don't want to say, oh, France being home. No, listen, I'm going I'm to I'm read Angie X's comment. You are a black girl living in France or now in America. I was born in France. Okay, but this is the thing. Okay, so like the term African-American, right? Yeah. The reason why we are African-Americans is because we were disconnected for the most part from Africa. So we took on the yeah. term African-American. Now... If we knew where we were from, we wouldn't call ourselves African American. We would be Nigerian American, Ghanaian American, you know, whatnot. Yeah. You know where you're from. Your mom is Togolese. Your dad is from Senegal. Mm -hmm. Usually, so I mean, like you know where you're from. I mean, usually, I I I, I guess Senegalese is maternal, so you would be more Senegalese. Freaking. Every time somebody asks me, oh, what are you? Like, oh, I'm Senegalese, Togolese, French. Like, Afro-European. Just mush it all together. And if you want to know more, I'll break it down for you. You know? It's just easier to say. You know, I just kind of, boom, say it. Like, I'm Afro-European. And then, like, the people who are actually interested, you know, I'll be like, oh, my dad is from Senegal. Oh, my mom is from Togo. And then, like, we're low-key all from Togo. But, like, from Togo, you know, totally, totally, totally. I mean, Togo's cool, but I, I always, I, whatever. You're totally. You're totally. I don't need you to tell me. 
Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Very aware of what I am. Okay, okay. I'm, okay. I'm not defensive. I'm not getting defensive. I'm just trying to let you know, like, I know what I am. You don't have to reassure me. I, I okay, completely, <laughs> completely understand. So how how is your uh how how are you now? I'm 21. I'm 21. Okay. So tell us, share with us your experience being Afro-European here in America since you were six. Well, so um, my parents do have like a lot of African friends, you know, all of their um, family friends and stuff. Like we're still pretty connected. And I feel like outside of everyone else, like, you know, like the certain activities that we do, like, we have, I don't know if you are familiar with raclette, but like raclette nights, it's like a Swiss custom. It's just like we do such European things compared to all of my parents' other friends. Like it's just so influential in our house, but it's just like when you come into our house, like you still see like all the African sculptures and paintings and stuff. It's just like both like i'm i feel like i'm living within three cultures at once because i'm outside i speak english when i come home i speak french and then like you know i still have my family in africa that i connect with and like we listen to african music and french music and, you know it's kind of it gets confusing sometimes Felice, to like you, find you, a place yeah uh felicia uh do you do you have a uh, are you dating anyone no. You know, um, your last boyfriend, was he a bottom shelf Brad, as we call it? What's a bottom shelf Brad? Did you have a uh, white boyfriend? He's the white version of Pookie and Ray Ray. Did you have a bottom shelf Brad, your last, your last boyfriend? Boyfriend was Haitian. The last boyfriend was Haitian? Yeah. Okay. I only date black men. Oh, okay. Okay. So you in the chat room, you, you see, you, you're wrong. You're wrong. You in the chat room. He said that I was oh my god. I hate when people say that. I'm just saying you in the chat room, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. But oh, okay. No, I Okay, go ahead. Go like, get like your, I your experience. Go in you. side. Like I listened like this morning. I I was listening to Tufan on my way to work. Because that's to like who? what gets me in the mood. Listen you know to who? Like, Listen to who? Tufan. 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 Yeah, it's fine. Go say hello. No, no, no. She's right here. Oh. You can say hello to her. Yeah. Too, too fine. Who's too fine? It's like this huge group in Togo. Oh, Mister, you're Togolese. You're Togolese. Y'all know nothing. I, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know. Too, I don't know. Too. I don't know. No too fine. So I don't know. No too fine. No. I uh. I, I apologize. All right. Continue. Like they're really like, like they're like you know kind of like a whiz kid. Like they're pretty popular. You know. In Togo, okay. Yeah. Too fun. Okay. Too fun. Yeah. Two double O F A N. Too fun. Now, now, now you said uh, you and your uh, brother or your boyfriend. Oh, so you don't have a boyfriend now? No. Okay. Well, on your profile says you were you were in a relationship. Man, and you, I'm and you got pictures, been on and you got almost night job, and you got pictures hugging up with some dudes. So I was thinking that was just still your boyfriend. Like two years ago, but you uh, saw how black he was. Yeah, yeah. He so yeah, black. you're right. I, 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 you know, just I forgot. I forgot. So you said you and your brother are working on a project. A yeah, what project? Tell, tell yeah. us about the project. So you know, I was asking my brother after the situation that happened, and I was just kind of like, "Hey, um, do can you think of any families like us?" He's like, what do you mean? I was like, you know, like, we spend a lot of time in Europe, but our parents are really African. Like, they still have, like, super African values, but, like, the way that they move is very, like, lax, like, Europeans. Like, can you think of, and, like, out of all of our family friends, because my dad has a lot of friends, we can only think of, like, one family. And I was like, like, how do you feel at school, Brandon? Like, how do you feel when we're around 
family or how do you feel when we're around family friends like and he was just like you know i never really related to anybody else like i did with that family because it's just like there's certain ideas that like af some african families would be like no way what the hell like duh, 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 duh. you know and you know kind of like um in my household like <laughs> um I won't say that we talk back, but like we voice our opinions, which is just like in an African household is like, ah, uh, nah, like that's not going down. Like, but you know, that's kind of where like the, I guess the European part comes in or like, you know, just how my mom sends my brothers to France every year. Like my brothers were in Paris when France won the World Cup, like, but we still wholeheartedly believe that Africa won the World Cup. Even though, like France was the flag that was now nah, France, won, France won the World Cup. Which is, yeah, France won the World Cup. Yeah, there's a lot of African players on the, the French team, but France won the World Cup. Yeah. All right, go ahead. You there? Um. So, you know, the point of the podcast was to kind of see, like, who else feels like this. Mm. Like, how many of us are there? Are there any others? Where's your, is your brother? Where's your brother? I know he's there somewhere. Where's your brother? Tell your brother to come on. Is but mom's is not. I don't know what. I don't know what's happening right now. I really don't. But you know, she won't let him speak. So why? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Tell your, mom to, to talk to your mom. Tell your mom to come on. I need to talk to your mom. Please, please don't antagonize her. Please, please. Because okay. because when when you we talk when we get off, I still have to um, live with her. You know. So and then like you see where I'm saying like like this this is the African part. It's just like you know being so reserved and like private and you know it's like I'm having a conversation with somebody. It's not big deal but to her you know this is this is where i say like this is that the african in her is coming out it's just like why why are you being like like my parents still don't, don't tell what? people tell people what they still my parents still don't tell people when they uh travel like you know like when you're traveling it's like superstitious to like tell other people about it like what are you doing hmm? Okay, you say your okay. mom doesn't tell people when they, your mom doesn't tell people when she travels travels. Yeah, it's like a superstition. Are you are you are you in school? Like, are you trying to get out the house? Like, you need to get out the house. What do you mean? I mean, you need to get out the house. What do you mean? You need to get out the house. Why? I mean, Why? See, mom Why had you on a uh, on lock. How how old is your brother? <laughs> Um, he is sixteen. Okay, he's young. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He, yeah. Okay. I mean, maybe if I had like discussed this with her, you know, she wouldn't be as mad as she is right now. Why is she but mad? Be I. I really don't know, and this is what I'm saying. Like, there's just certain things that she's lacks about. And there's certain things that she's very like, you know, she puts her foot down and she's like, I'm not budging. I'm being stubborn. I'm not, you know, like, okay, I'm not going to push her, you know. Yeah. But see, the thing, I kind of understand the Afro, like where you're coming from as far as Afro-European, because I know, I think from my understanding in Gabon, they're super proud of their French heritage in Gabon, mm -hmm. their French heritage. Yeah. You know, so when you go there, when you go to Cote d'Ivoire, you know, the main language is uh, French. Meanwhile, yeah. the other countries, they'll see. I, mean, I don't know what that's what they call What are you doing with your phone? Like, stop that with your phone. It's, yeah. Oh, well, sorry. I had a lasagna in the oven and I didn't want it to burn. Okay, well, save. We want some lasagna too. So. No, I don't want to give you no lasagna because you mean. How about me? How am I mean? 
Okay, continue like, to tell us about trying to your... Continue yeah, to tell us you're not about trying to understand. Your... I'm trying to understand. Continue to tell us about your Afro-European roots. So you're kind of like Afro-Latino, but Afro-European. Isn't Afro-Latino just like the black people in Latin America? Yeah, so you're the black person in Europe. See, this is the thing, right? If I lived in France, I would just say, Je suis togolaise. Like, I'm togolese. But I live in America where everything is just confusing. You know, it's for a long time, like, I think I started claiming being African, like, in maybe high school. Whoa, 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 whoa. So you just. Wait, 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 wait. So for a long, long time, because, like, I was young, you know, my, my mom was like, You're French. I was like, okay, well, hi, I'm French. Hi, I'm Felice. I'm French. And then, like, everyone just kind of knew me as the French girl. I spoke French. You know, when I spoke with my mother, I spoke French, you know. And then um, when I got to middle school, I had, I remember saying, like, oh, like, my parents are African. And every single day after, I regretted saying it. Because the taunting and the teasing and the bullying that happened after that day made me just want to, like, hide in a corner. Mm. Like, it, it was unbearable. And then I had, like, left for two years, and I came back to my hometown. And, you know, everyone kind of left me alone. But then that's when everybody started doing, like, the whole dashiki thing. And, like, oh, like... Black and proud and black is beautiful and you know I'm low key African. And I'm like, keep that shit away from me, okay? Because you was coming at me mad hard talking about I live in the trees, like, bro, like do you, my house in Africa, like you can't even imagine it. Like I got mates, I got chauffeurs, I got this, I got that, like whatever. Whatever. <laughs> We're not about to go go into that, but I just felt. It's like, why are you making me feel bad about where I'm from? You know, type shit. Let, let me ask you, why did your uh, parents leave France for, uh, where are you now? You're in New Jersey, where are you? Yeah. In, um, institutional racism. Okay, so they left institutional racism to come to a place where uh, that is well, the, I'm, wait, wait, wait. The, the, the headquarters, there, the, the, the epicenter no of institutional there's no laws in France that um, help against discrimination, like racial discrimination. Like, if I own property and I don't want to rent to you because you're black, I can be like, no, I don't want to rent to you because you're black. And there's nothing you could do about it. You cannot sue. You can't call anybody. You're just going to have to move on and find something else. Same thing with jobs. So, you know, okay. I don't know if it's gotten any better, but at the time, that's what the situation was. So it just made more sense to move here. <laughs> um, I'm guessing the comments is really funny, huh? I mean, I, I'm trying. I mean, do, do you? Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Like, do you plan on going? Relocating back to Togo at all? No, Senegal. There we go. Senegal. Um, that's where all 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 my like the family that I really really like I'm close to are and like I just all my aunts are entrepreneurs and they all move back and I just want to be like boom the next one in line like. And then not only that, it's like, it's not about making money. It's about creating opportunity, you know? And, like, I really feel like people should stop feeling like, oh, I have to go to a European country or America to make it. Like, it's just, how come when they go, they don't come back? And then it, we don't, you know, contribute to the economy. So it's just like, my parents made the sacrifice and left. And I benefited from all of the sacrifice I got to be educated here. I took things from here. So those things that I took, I'm going to bring them back. Mm -hmm. 
Let, let me ask you, were your parents, when they first came to America, were they uh, cooning it up when they got here? Were they cooning? Nah, they just kind of chilled with, like, other African people. Okay. Because, so like, you know, in... in, um, in okay, New York, how, how did your parents feel about Black Americans when they got here? Tell the truth. Tell the truth. The truth. Don't tell the truth. Tell the truth. How do they feel about them now? <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. How do they feel about them? How do they feel about Black Americans when your parents got here? I just feel like we feel like there's a separation, but it's not that we want to make it. It's just that we've always kind of felt it. Like from the moment I was in school, it was just like, uh uh, you ain't the same as me. Like, bro, you don't even know me. <laughs> you know? So um, they just kind of, I guess, after a few times, of getting treated like with the cold shoulder. I can't tell you per se how they feel, but it's just like when I bring up certain issues, like, I don't know, like Black Lives Matter and stuff, it's just like their reactions are so like. Okay, okay yeah, so exactly. So the, here we go. The, the, when your parents got here, were they aware of the Black American experience and the struggles that Black Americans um, went through? Did it make it possible for them to even immigrate here? Were they aware of that? <laughs> They were, but um, they feel as though. See, and then like I don't want to go too deep. No, no, we going deep. Always... No, we going deep tonight. Go ahead. Um, I feel like a lot of African people start the same way. Like I don't want to say start the same way, but like when we come here, we live in the hood, you know. But it's just like they're always like, well, I started in the hood, too, but I got out. Why you can't get out? And it's just like, why do you guys not like, why are you guys? Why do you guys pretend like you're blind to the things that are here? And then they're like, well, they have so many advantages. They're citizens. There's certain benefits that they have. Like we are immigrants. Like we have even more obstacles, but like we just keep going. And I'm like, but it's just like you guys forget the advantages that you have too, like most of you guys are bilingual like the moment that you say oh i speak french people like white people like their guards come down they're like oh you speak french like oh there's a part of whiteness in you that i can connect to you know which is what an an advantage that i feel like some african people don't know that they have okay you know, because it's like, you know, the moment that you tell white people, oh, I'm African, it's just like, I don't know what in their head kind of clicks, but it's just not the same as, oh, I'm African American. You know what I mean? Okay. Do you so know you, what I mean? So you think white people feel more comfortable around Africans than they do African Americans? That, from your experience, yeah. you I guess because those are the ones that they didn't capture. I don't know. Okay, so it has, to do, it has something to do with slavery and the guilt, white guilt and slavery and is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Okay, so how do you, how do your parents feel about African Americans now since they've been in uh, America now for about 14, 15 years? I just I look at our parties, I look at our gatherings. I don't see any African Americans. Say that one more time. I said, when you look at our parties, our barbecues, our you know gatherings, uh -huh. I don't see African Americans. All right, so you guys don't. So, do you personally have any African American friends? Yeah, she's sitting right here. <laughs> Let me see her. Where is she? I can't see her. No, no, no. Her hair not done yet. So, no, 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 no. This what is mean, between you done. and I. <laughs> but I'm, I'm gonna just cover her with my hair. But, um, yeah, I got mad African-American friends, but it's just like, yo, I had to. Why don't you invite this to the Huh? So why don't you invite them to the cookout? I do. You just said they that. They don't show up. You just, oh, you said that they don't show up. <laughs> my okay. friend, but, but, but boy, wait, those are my friends, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm saying, but you, you asked about my parents. Mm -hmm. So what, right? do you, what do your parents so do? Like, what do your parents do here in America? What do they do? Um, Hello? 
you hear me? I can't hear you. You can't hear me? I'm back. I hear you now. Can you hear me? I'm, I'm, I feel like... I want you to answer the question. What do you always do? I'm, I'm trying to answer the question for you. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so my dad works in Nike. And okay. my mom works in education. Like your phone, like I'm gonna grab it and get you and get you scratching. Your phone keeps scratching. What? What? Your phone it keeps scratching. Your like it's just stack. Okay. Oh, what uh? Can we do a call in? Can people? Call, is it okay if people come on? And ask questions. Can I ask you a direct question? All right, if you guys have a question, <laughs> please send me an email and you will be sent the link, okay? And, let, and let's be nice. Let's be nice, okay? You guys call in. Call please, in. Uh, Y'all, like, be nice. Because, like, th th this is not I'm what we're here for. I'm going to make sure they're nice. I'm going to make sure they... Well, I mean... Too nice in those comments. I'm. I mean, people wasn't questioning my intelligence. High. No, it was the like, comments. Okay, it was the con. Now, guys, this all came about. I think we were talking about. Uh, go tell tell everybody what we were talking about. Like, I, I forgot how it came up as far as the trans. So he was talking about trans. He, he look. He was having you know just a regular conversation. Like just guys having beer around the table, and they were talking about transgender laws. And all I kind of said was like, "I don't feel. I feel like it's cool to have this conversation, but I don't think it's cool to film it, you know." And then why? I was why saying, not, why, "Why is it not cool?" Hey, wait, 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 wait. I'm explaining the situation anyway. Uh, I was, I was, I was like, maybe I feel differently because I'm Afro-European. You know, I have. A very lax way of thinking, so you know. Because I know what you're calling about. So if you know what you call it, I'm calling it. Okay. Can I answer my call? Okay, I'm sorry. I see. No, I'm just. So what was I calling about? Because mommy called you. I heard her. What did she call me about? Because I'm having a conversation. What conversation are you having? I'm having. I'm. I'm just on FaceTime. It's cool. I, I'm on. Fa Did you see? Yes. How many times have you been in FaceTime in this house? Plenty of times. So, so that's so, why so, I'm so not so understanding so what the me, problem let me, is. Let me, let me get my talk out. Okay. All right. So I want to call me and and so I have to drop everything that I'm going to come here. I don't know, and that's why I'm wondering why she's acting like okay, this. Did you wondering? Did you try to find out why? I t yo, she she said she, she ever since I've been on the phone, she's been acting like it's more than all I am is on Facetime. Seriously, it's nothing more than that. And I, and I repeat again. What? C'est pour ça que je comprends pas pourquoi oui, elle est en train de. Qu'est-ce qu'elle n'aime pas dans cette conversation Qu'est-ce qu'elle n'aime pas dans cette conversation Qu'est-ce qu'elle pas cette conversation Et qu'est-ce qu'elle n'aime pas dans cette conversation Et qu'est-ce qu'elle n'aime pas dans cette conversation Et là, maintenant, moi, tu me dis, je peux même te demander de t'arrêter cette conversation. Ok, please, just, okay, please, just tell me what you guys are upset about. I just want to know, so that I can understand. Your mom is upset, and I, je sais pas pourquoi elle est upset. Elle m'a appelé, I was doing something, elle m'a appelé, je suis venu jusqu'à la maison. Je t'appelle depuis tout à l'heure pour pouvoir savoir. Tu me réponds même pas. Ok, pardon. Ouais. Non, et non, non, je ne veux pas. Si ta maman n'est pas content, toi, tu dois te savoir pourquoi elle n'est pas contente par rapport à ces conversations que tu as demandé d'avoir. Voilà. Hello. Yeah, I think she hanged up. Um, Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. What happened? I think she hanged up. Oh, why? What, what, what happened? What's going on? 
I think the I think somebody was like you know being uh was was talking to her you know like in a very violent way. She got angry. Uh, yeah, you know how so uh, African parents behave. Okay. That kind of uh, you know just attacking, attacking, and whatever. Yeah, my mom. We do that all the time, but I always have the upper hand. You said? No, no, I don't. I don't. I don't steal my mom. It's just sometimes we have it on WhatsApp. I stay alone. Uh, it seems like uh, this stuff is crack. I wonder what's going on today with this internet everywhere. You guys have a problem? Ow. Dinos. Dinos, you have audio issue. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. Can you hear me like this? Yeah, I can hear you now. I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, cool. All right, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, like I think what is happening is that she was talking and she's using her phone. Actually, if you're doing a, a hangout, it's much better if you have a computer or a very good smartphone. Um, for me, I use a Nokia 6.1 smartphone, so you know it's much better. It doesn't overheat and all this stuff. Uh, I think that's just the. Uh, that was just the issue. And another thing, someone came into the, her room and was being aggressive, mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, she had, you know, she was speaking French and English, you know, as we should Togolese. And I think she got, I, I, think, I think they're trying to tell her to stop, you know, the whole uh, hangout. And she just, I think out of anger, just went off. That's just what happened there. <laughs> I'm, so I'm so sorry. No, well, at the beginning, like I was just trying to have a general conversation with the mom because I've been to Togo like four times. So I was okay. like, hey, you know, what where, where, where part of Togo is she from? But she just she didn't want to answer. Like she she did not want to answer. Yeah, that's a problem. Some of um some of our people having they have this issue of trying to relate to other people. That was just the problem. Um, for me, I have no, like I tell people, I have no issues relating to, apart from people in the continent, people outside the continent have no problems, like relations and everything, and, you know, getting to know people. So, um, some people are still, you know, still in that mindset, it's still like a box, not, it's not yet broken away from, you know, it hasn't been broken open, you know, so yeah, it's, I understand. Let me let me ask you. What are your thoughts on her uh, calling herself Afro-European? Like, what you know? What... I, I think that is a that is a, a palm-colored talking point. Um, Afro-European. It, it doesn't make sense because she's from Togo, so she's from the continent. She's from West Africa. Right. You know, so Afro-European to me, it's like I, when I saw the title, it's like, what the hell? <laughs> what is going? <laughs> What is going on here? Because uh, even those in Europe, uh, black people in Europe don't call themselves Afro-Europeans. Right. You know, because I've lived in England, so they don't call themselves that. Even in other European countries like Spain, Holland, you know, the, the rest of the other places. So I don't understand why she called herself that mm -hmm. Afro-European. It doesn't make sense. First of all, you're using a fake you know, European hair. You know, you know, use your real hair. I have a problem well, with that. Well, they, they ain't got that. Has not, that that's that's ninety eight percent of all black women. So we can't just pin that on. No, that. no, I can't pin it on her. But the thing is that, uh, um, to me, the whole Afro European doesn't make sense. She's from Togo, uh, so she's. Well, that's she's, what I'm trying to tell them. Like, if you know where you're from, you, the only reason why African Americans call themselves African Americans is because. We, we, we lost knowledge of where we're from. Like, you know, where yeah. you're from. I don't believe. 
Yeah, so it, I think it's just uh, it's just she was brought up in America, and the system in America has confused her. <laughs> so, and you have so many of them. Like I was talking to one yesterday, and you know, so much confusion. Funny enough, the African parents bring their children here at a young age. They come into the system, and they get more confused, and they start fighting us that from the continent, which doesn't make sense. I was talking to. Uh, a sister, she's she's from the Igbo tribe, the same tribe I am from. Right, right, right. But she was brought to Canada at a very young hold age. On, so hold on, hold on one second, but, but can you hear me clearly? People are saying saying I have an issue with my volume. Can no, I can, I can hear you clearly. Seriously, for real. Like for me, I'm using a headset with uh, a small speaker. Go ahead. So, as I was saying, that uh, I was talking to the sister, she's from the Igbo tribe, like I am, but she was brought in here when she was very young. So, she came to Canada when she was like maybe nine, ten, or I don't know, maybe six. And she has grown up into this system. So, this system has, in a way, transformed her mind. So, she was saying things that, because uh, I was asking the questions, you believe in swirling. And she didn't know what swirling was all about. <laughs> I was like, seriously, you lived in the West all this while. I don't know what swirling is. Then I found out that maybe she was more of the person that don't really um, relate to people to learn more information like I do. You know, fairly young, um, greenhorn, very inexperienced, doesn't really know a lot. Um, she was like saying that if she was going to date a brother that came from the continent here in, to Canada, that she would, she would have to give the brother like five years of uh, trying to sort himself out here. I'm like, oh, I don't get that. What does that supposed to mean? I, I was shaking my head because what the things that came out from the sister's mouth was so, so... I was like, man, our people need, need exposure. I think her parents did take her back home, for real. But I, I would say this: her parents are probably the type of people who have so much. I would say, I, I, I would say, animosity or hate or disappointment towards their countries that they're completely, I would say, somewhat disconnected from their countries. Yeah, the the thing the thing about that they're is that. Disappointed. That you know the countries have let them down so much that they're just like you know. Yeah, I do understand that that some Africans don't want to go back to their country because their country let them down. But you you know everywhere there's always a good side and a bad side in all the countries in the world. That's what people should understand. Like I could decide next week I can go to Nigeria back and you know see how things are going. Or I may travel to Ghana or may either travel to Kenya, you know, and that kind of thing. So it, it's a mindset. People are still with a certain mindset. They don't really know what's going on. They don't know that the United States of America that they hold so dearly is, uh, is marked for destruction. And uh, you have issues like, uh, because you know, there are a lot of things going on here that people think that, oh, it's not a uh, warfare. You know, you have chemtrails, you have harp, you have uh, war on food. War on drugs. You have police shooting our brothers and sisters on the street. We have all kinds of um, policies done by a race of people that don't like your guts, good or bad. They don't just like you. They just want to take you out at any means. You have a, a very, a very fraudulent system here. Okay, so our people too don't see that they come here and feel that this is where everything ends. But you know, this is where. This is where war starts on the verge because every time I wake up here in Canada, see things around, I'm like, man, you know, and some Canadians are saying, that, oh, nothing's going to happen to our country. We're safe. I'm like, you guys are not safe. You guys are not safe because you guys did crazy stuff to people as much as the U.S. back in the day. So, you know, you guys are not safe. It's, uh, there's going to be a retribution, definitely. And, by then, it will be too late for some set to go back to the continent where, you know, it's still, it's still developing. There's still, uh, like Amira said, there's a lot of business improvement where he's in Kenya. Um, 
So people should try as much as possible to really look back at the continent. Don't people should you know because anytime I'm on your live chat, anytime I'm on your, on your live stream where you're discussing, you know, there's this crazy stuff that happens on your chat where people are just you know so anti-African for no reason, and that is the thing. Like, why are people wasting their time on your chat from being so anti-African? When they they can ask you how you got your Nigerian citizenship, you know, like me too as a brother, like ah, uh, Egbon Dinas, how did you get your uh, Nigerian citizenship? How like can you show us like because everybody needs to get their passports, definitely, you know, because people have to leave, definitely. You can, uh, America is not going to last forever. That's what people should know. You know, I, I haven't lived, I wasn't born in America, I wasn't born in Canada, but with my period in living in, in these countries like Canada and the UK, these countries, their systems won't last. And because and you find that most people are now going to the continent now than it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago. You have a lot of Europeans going, you have a lot of African Americans also going to Ghana too. You know, people are getting their passports. For the ones that are still holding it down, like, oh, we're going to die in America, you know, ADOS and the rest, you know, I think people should try and have a very good exit plan. I keep saying this all the time. Like, last week I was helping my Nigerian people here in Canada, in Calgary, to renew their passports because people always find you may have the Canadian passport, but you need to have the Nigerian passport too because anything can happen where you have to exit. I know of some Nigerians that feel that, oh, I have the Canadian passport, so I don't need to renew the Nigerian passport. But that's bullshit. You need to get it renewed. All right. Any, anything can happen at any time. We live in a world where you can wake up and things are just happening. Change is so unpredictable now. People should wake up, you know, whether you know all these things are yeah, Afro European or whatever, or it doesn't, it it won't, it, it it won't save you from what's going on. You know, so people are fighting to really kiss up to palm colored Zazi all the time, but seriously, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, I know that white supremacy is global, but come on, Africa is what we call the last frontier. The last frontier. But let me just uh, shout out these super chats. Shout out to Fafu Malau. Thank you, uh, Eshe Madupe, Eshe, Eshe, for the super chat. Uh, we heard exactly what happened. I just hope this humbles my African brothers and sisters who think we can deny for our all lack substance. Humility, go humility goes a long way. We got another one, too. I don't know. I'm trying to find it. Hold on one second. Okay. Uh, don't judge people when they are so young and growing and learning from occurrences like this. Ten years from now, she will probably impress us all. No, I'm all right. No, no one's judging her. You know, it's just we're just having a general conversation. Uh, and she might be very young, so she hasn't really known a lot of stuff. You know, I was I was half cooning when I was twenty. So you know, I was just half a cool when I was. Oh. So I yeah. I, well, for me, I started really trying to question a lot of stuff in my early 20s um, I, I because I'm the first uh, born in my family. So I have like two younger brothers behind me. So the weight of responsibility and leadership was always on my shoulder all the time. So I didn't want to slip or say things that would hurt people. So for me, I was, I'm just like my dad. I do a lot of research. I don't just go out there saying trash, you know time after as the time goes by you tend to learn more you learn more and everything so um yeah for me i've always been this person that apart from the fact that i grew up in the continent i always want to meet other people that look like me in other parts of the world you know i didn't want to claim i didn't want to i i wasn't that person that was built to be claiming oh that i have to be a certain like people claim like she claims she's afro-european i didn't want to claim that i'm like I'm African, I'm Nigerian, you know, so I don't, I don't get it. It's, it's like, um, this Western system is, is not just doing our people in, in the, in the Western hemisphere, but is it also doing Africans that bring their children here and change their mindset. And they start thinking that they are 
uh, they are cool with uh, palm colored white uh, palm colored zaddy, it, and it doesn't make sense because there's always gonna be this differential quote and somewhere between us and them. That's just the thing. Yeah, I think someone sent you an email, one Ibarra. Let me ask you, if you are uh, from a Francophone country, if you are from a Francophone African country, I'll, uh, let me know and I'll send you the link. Uh, so, Senegal, Mali, Cote d'Ivoire, uh Gabon, Congo. No, 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 no. Oh yeah, Gabon, Congo. Um Ca Ca Cameroon. Congo, Benin, part of Oh. Part of, uh, <laughs> Sorry, T Kelly. I haven't gotten my Canadian citizenship yet. I still have my Nigerian passport. <laughs> <laughs> I just renewed mine last week. <laughs> Sorry, man. I haven't got to my Canadian citizenship yet. All right, expedite. Okay, if if you want to call in, it would we'll love to get you. <laughs> T uh, Kelly. <laughs> oh God. Um, Afro European. I've seen the link. <laughs> Hold on one second. I'm gonna meet myself. Go ahead and talk. I gotta take this call. I'm gonna meet myself. Hold on one second. All right. Hold on one second. Let's pray for the young lady. What? <laughs> Hotel City <laughs> High School. We need y'all boys on the team, though. Cyber attacks in the future. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, I'm back. That was my mom. I had to take that call. That was my mom. I had to talk. You there? <laughs> yeah, I'm here. <laughs> so the chat. I had to, I had to take that call. That was my mom. No, okay. I understand. I understand. We got a brother on from uh, France. So, uh, Ulysses, are you calling from France? Exactly, yeah. Okay, are you Afro-European? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I'm not. You're not Afro-European? 
<laughs> but I, I I don't put this title on myself, and I think this this title is quite. No, nah, I think it's some bullshit, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Afro European. I, I I don't even cons. I, I I feel like even European people don't consider themselves European, except for the <laughs> fact that their countries are part of the European Union. So personally, <laughs> as even even more because I'm uh, I'm of African descent. My parents are both from Senegal. Uh, I don't okay, consider not, myself not, not Nagadef. <laughs> Mangi Firek. Jerry Jeff Serentuba. Yes. <laughs> Jerry Jeff Serentuba. Serentuba is the best, yeah. So, so no, not at all. I'm not, I'm not Afro-European, but I understand the term uh, in the sense that um, for people that are born of two African parents and that are born in, uh, in those European countries, they have two cultures. They are not um, fully African culturally. So if they grew, if they grew up all their life in, uh, for example, France, for myself, um, most of their culture is French. I, I'm not gonna lie. And why I'm saying that is that even if they they are like they eating the food from their parents' uh, home countries, uh, they might know the languages. And even that, it's not, it's not for sure. Uh, their culture is also, a part of the culture is also from, from the country where, where they grew up. So I understand when um, uh, African child, African children uh, that grew up, for example, in France are gonna play for, for, for France, for example. So I, I understand the term, but I think it's like, we don't need a title like that, we don't need to, I think people that, that love this title trying to play like, trying to imitate African-Americans, but they don't realize that the reason why African-Americans are called like that is for a whole of, a whole of the reason. So that, that's my take on it. Yeah, and the fact is that, you know, this uh, European slave mentality you know, we just, every, some people just want to suck up to white Zazia or palm color Zazia all the time, which I don't understand. You know, I see it here in Canada. I talk to a lot of people and I know their standpoints. You know, they, you know, they have this uh, mentality that, you know, Superman palm color Zazia will save them all the time. And they feel, and around, around us, they feel that, oh, we don't need you anymore. It is uh, the, the whole thing about Afro European is bullshit. Like it's the same thing as saying Afro Latina. It doesn't make sense. Like most of those guys in the, in the South, in the South America, they're all taking as slaves from the West African coast to the South America. So it it doesn't make sense. Oh, they, they and the fact that they will tell her, oh they speak Spanish that they're Spanish. You know Spanish man, you're, you're from the continent. You are just taking as slaves from the Spanish with it. For, with the Spanish people taking us slaves to, to South America. So people should stop. It doesn't make sense at all. Like, I don't get it. And to be, to be honest, I, I never heard in my whole life the term uh, where I live uh, in Europe, neither. The only places I saw the term were in this title and in tw on Twitter when people are chattering and telling <laughs> a bunch of nonsense. But, in France, I never heard that in in all my life. Either either people say they are African from their home countries, or they think they're they're French, or they say they're both. That that's it. But they're no, this term is not like a trend or something that that we like to call ourselves. Look, someone is saying about me being Afro Canadian in the chat. I'm like I'm not Afro Canadian. I am Nigerian from the continent. You know, it's, 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 I'm, I'm as a same citizenship as a um, dynasty. So I was Nigerian. So I don't understand because I still have my green, my green, white, green passport here with me. I don't, um, I don't come to Canada and claim an Afro Canadian. I don't do that. I'm my country first, my continent and also, first. And also, and also the girl who goes, I think she wasn't even born like in Europe. So, that doesn't that makes even less sense to me 
because she has no ties to, to, to this place. But I think like maybe it's the case for some Francophone uh, African countries. Uh, they feel like they feel like being from Europe is like um, it's a privileged thing because there, a lot of people are trying to make the move uh, to go to Europe for better opportunities. I, I know it's the case and they either they cross the Mediterranean sea, uh, sea or if they got the money, they're going to take the plane. But a lot of people are trying to make the move. So maybe it's some, it's some kind of, of status thing. Like I got the status, I'm, a, I'm European. You know what I mean? Like Just like people are trying to see the, the Eiffel Tower instead of going to Africa because European got, Europe, Europe got this status. But nah, <laughs> I, I think she was bugging. Okay, Cohen Davids. I don't know who you are, but uh, I'm not Afro-Canadian. And I'm not an illegal Nigerian in Canada, please. Okay, this hate for Nigerian should stop. It's getting annoying. Like, you guys come to Diana show and you throw all your anti-African hate here. It doesn't make sense. We're just here to have a hangout and talk about things. Try and relax. Uh, the, the, ch the chat is always bugging here, but you shouldn't pay attention to it. You shouldn't pay attention. And I'm just trying to let Cohen Davis know that I'm not an illegal, you know, if you have anything against Nigerians, come talk to me. I'm the Nigerian here. Don't talk. Don't just, just talk to me, you know. True, man. We're going to we'll go ahead. Uh, it's a very interesting show. We'll go ahead and close out. Uh, we'll start off with you, uh, brother, police brutality. How can people uh, reach you and go subscribe to your channel? Okay, my channel on YouTube is Police Brutality Worldwide. I had put the link uh, beforehand, but I can still put it now for people to see. Um, you could check my channel. I put, I put stuff about police brutality um, happening world and how it's affecting our people. And also for, you know, for those in my country, I feel that uh, the American police are very much, you know, they are, met, they are much better than the Nigerian police. They should think again because if they see my videos, they will have a rethink. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dinos, for bringing me to your show. Well, and brother, you, 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 can say that way you want, but I don't have oh. nothing to promote, really. So it's nothing. Just thank you for this channel. Thank you for what you're doing. And, and keep it up, brother. All right, I appreciate it. Everyone, thank you for joining. Make sure you go to search for Uhuru on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Until next time, Family Dynasty Mirror, search for Uhuru. Peace.